A very good evening and welcome to yet another edition of Times Exclusive airing on TTV. Wherever you are, my name is Brian Banda, welcoming you in this edition of the program this week. My guest today is the Honorable Minister of Information and ICT, the Honorable Mark Bodomani MP. I love brilliant green on my walls. I love signal red, sweet lime, electric blue. I just love golden yellow. You get all that and more at Rainbow Paints. Imagine a water-based paint that is water resistant. Imagine a paint that is absolutely washable to remove dirt. And it guarantees you 10,000 cleaning scrubs over its lifespan without losing its luster. There can only be one paint that does just that. And that paint is Acrylic Sheen. Get yours today at all leading hardware stores. Rainbow Paints. Peace of mind. Part of the deal. We're not shaking hands in this program sure. for the sake of Corona, but welcome sure. to yet another edition of the program, uh, Times ex Exclusive, tonight on TTV. Thank you, Brian. Honorable Minister, we, I'll, I'll just cut to the chase because we, we have a lot to talk uh, tonight. We are meeting at a time when the country is facing a serious problem of Corona. How are you managing this situation this time, we have never been here before as a government. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me in your program, Brian, uh, to begin with, um, and greetings to your uh, viewers. I will agree with you that uh, we are in a particularly precarious uh, situation. As you know, that uh, His Excellency the President mm. declared that we are in the state of uh, disaster due to the pandemic. And uh, you also recall that it was the World Health Organization that declared that uh, coronavirus is a pandemic. And so as a country, we had to respond as such. So when the president declared that we were in a state of uh, disaster and we needed to start working on how we can respond to the pandemic. From the day that the president declared, he also did mention that he was appointed a special cabinet committee on coronavirus. And so the special cabinet committee was set up and it started its work immediately. So if you ask how we are managing, we are managing but at the same time, we are also learning by the day. Because I do not believe that there is in any country in the world that uh, prepared 100% how they were going to manage the pandemic. Uh, so we are, we are there, but I must thank God that uh, we are doing all we can to manage the pandemic. Where is the president in all these things? He, he looks like... It looks like he has just locked himself up at Sanjika Palace. We haven't seen him out. We haven't seen him visiting even one single hospital. Where is the president in all this, Honorable Minister? Well, I, I, I don't think it is necessary for us to be reflecting on the president. Uh, but why, I want why, to why is it not necessary? No, 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 it's not necessary. Uh, because uh, he is on top of all these things that are happening. As I said, that uh, he appointed a special cabinet committee on coronavirus. And the committee is in touch with him almost on a daily basis through the chairperson. And so uh, he is managing and he's being updated. Managing what from Sanjika Palace? Yes, but he's been coming out. He's been coming out. He, he has actually. He, 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 hasn't, he's, he, he's hasn't, actually he hasn't gotten out of Sanjika Palace. He hasn't visited any hospital. He hasn't given out a press conference, what he has done is just given a statement. No, I, I, he I hasn't think, allowed the media to ask him serious questions as far as this pandemic is concerned. No, I, I think, Brian, uh, you have not been following issues. Uh, I have not been following no, you issues. you have not been following issues. Because the president has been speaking to the public. 
has he hasn't, been speaking he hasn't, since, <laughs> since the onset of this pandemic in our country. Yeah. He has been speaking he has to the given, public. He has been he giving is an the one, address. He is the one, actually, who announced the first cases, the first three cases that were, you know, uh, were found in Lilo. He's the first, who, the first one who announced that. And since that time, he has been speaking. And for, for your information, mm -hmm. he also came out to announce the orders that uh, he felt were necessary for the country to manage a uh, coronavirus. He announced Yeah, that, but do you uh, agree with no, me? No, wait a minute. Yeah. He announced that yeah. the schools should be closed. Mm. And he, the other measures also, he emphasized them. He has been speaking to the public. And I don't know how else would you want him to do. Yeah, what he has been managing. How, how, what else I would want to do, my president, is to answer questions to people like me. We are here to answer those questions. Why can't the president... That, that is the why, why, reason why, can't, why can't, why answer can't the president questions. answer questions from his people? No, I mean, we, we, you are posing the questions to us. Yeah. I speak on behalf of government. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am ready to take any question. Elsewhere. The chairperson. Elsewhere. The chairperson yes. Wait a minute. Yes. The chairperson is there and he's updating the nation on, almost on a daily basis. Elsewhere. The government is speaking. Elsewhere, people are seeing their president almost every day in the, on the front line of this pandemic, talking to journalists, visiting hospitals, talking to those that are in the front line of, of this battle. When was the last time President Mutarika answered questions from the media Brian, as far as this Brian, corona is concerned? Brian, because of the nature of my, my job, mm -hmm. I have been following international media and I do follow almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. the, uh, what, what you're saying is not completely true. It is not true that elsewhere every day people are seeing their president. It is not true. Not even in South Africa, not even in Kenya. It is the ministers, mm -hmm. minister, either Minister of Health or Minister of Information or other people that are de de designated elsewhere, to speak on elsewhere, this on behalf of Elsewhere, but presidents we, are answering questions from the media. No, the President of the Republic of Malawi, yes. His Excellency, the president, uh, His Excellency Professor Arthur Bidam mm -hmm. he is answering questions through us. Why, that is why we're the, the, the question is, so you, you we, want, we, you we did not you elect want, you, you, you we did not me. elect you as a president. You are not the president of this country. No, no, I'm, I'm the, you, I'm you, the are just a, you, you are just I'm, a government I, I speak for yeah. government. Yes. I speak for government. Yes. And I have to be there to, to respond to So why are you shooting President Mutari Gadani? He's been coming out. He's been, but he's he been has coming. not he has not done press conferences. No, I mean, how would you want more the president? We certainly want more. We certainly want more. Our friends are giving more? You see, that, that's, the, that's the problem. I think that's the problem that your brand has and, and, and some, some, some people have. Mm -hmm. You want to copy and paste everything that happens in it, 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 it has started with you. We, we it has are, started with your government. No, no, you are no, no, copying no. everything from Uganda. No, no, no. How? We're we not doing that. How? You are copying everything from Uganda. No, how? How? The, 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 Can you show me how? The, 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 the statement that came from, from Sanjika about uh, the, this, this pandemic, you took almost everything from Uganda. Which statement, Brian? Can you show There me? was a brochure that came out. No, we disowned it. That. That, that, that didn't come from government. When you disowned no, it. No, we disowned it. You disowned it when you it realized that it has backlash. You see, there's so much fake news flying around. There's so much fake news. And we disowned that. It did not come from, from government. Just to emphasize my point, mm -hmm. the president is speaking and he's speaking every day and he's doing that through people like us. The, 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 the people, hearing the people talk in Malawi, there is a, a perception that you are monopolizing this fight against corona. Elsewhere, they are having a conclusive task force, inclusive task force, where even those from the opposition are part of the problem. In South Africa, you said I should not take examples from, 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 from outside, but the, 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 these are viable examples. President Ramaphosa is fighting this problem together with the members of the opposition. We saw Malema, shoulder to shoulder with uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. Why are you doing this when this is a national problem? It is a national problem? Yes. And I agree. And uh, government has been concerting almost each and every stakeholder who is relevant to the fight against the pandemic. We have, as a committee, mm -hmm. we have been meeting various stakeholders, from the clergy to traditional leaders, to members of special interest groups, to civil societies, uh, even society of medical doctors. We've been meeting various stakeholders and they've been giving their inputs insofar as managing this pandemic is concerned. So it is, it is, it is uh, not true that the committee is not being inclusive. 
we are being inclusive because we are meeting various stakeholders because we believe we do not have monopoly of wisdom to all this that is happening. Did you, we have, are, you have you consulted opposition figures like Dr. Chakwera, Dr. Chirin, in, the, in, the, in this fight? When you say you have consulted I, I, I would want to understand yeah. the relevance. So they are not. They are not. They, they are no, not no, I, I would want to understand the relevance of, uh, uh, you know, of politics in all this, because this is not a political. Issue. You have politicized almost uh, everything about this, this corona. We have not politicized. You have. You have. You, you, How have we politicized? This corona fight has every face of politics in as far as your you see, administration you see, is concerned. Brian, when I was I was on your program mm -hmm. some months ago. Yes. I did advise you mm -hmm. that as a journalist, mm -hmm. you are there to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You are not here to give your opinions. Mm -hmm. So when you are saying we are politicizing, according to who? Because ah. we are not politicizing. Okay, so when you can... If you are having your opinion mm -hmm. in this program, mm -hmm. then there's a problem. So you, you mean... You, you've got to justify okay, your claims so you, you, who you, is saying okay. that we have politicized. Uh, we'll, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. But you're saying you, you, do, you don't see any relevance in consulting Dr. Chagwe and I, Dr. Chagwe. I was asking you... Mm -hmm. How relevant is it for us to, to, to politicize, uh, you know, uh, coronavirus? Because it's not about politics. It's not about politics. Anybody who has their ideas, they come to the committee and they consult the chairperson, they consult some of us. We have ideas and we want to lay them on the table uh, for us to move on. The, so the, do, the, do you the, want the, us the, to be going to each and every house of a person? No, but when you, say, when, when you say, when, when, when you say that... opened up for everyone. Yeah, but opening up means what, Honorable Minister? Opening up to say, those who believe they have something tangible to say about all this, mm. let them come. We are here. And they've been coming. And just, uh, we, we, I mean, the various stakeholders that we've been meeting, you can, you can ask them. Yeah, but I'm, I'm giving you an example of South Africa, where the president is working hand in hand with those in opposition. What is wrong for that to happen in Malawi? Well, I, I have not particularly studied that particular bit, uh, but uh, we do not want to have this to, to, to have this politicized. This is not about politics. So, consulting Dr. Jaguera and Chirima in the fight against Corona is he politicizing it. No, I, I, I do not really. Uh, that's why I, I wanted to, to understand, you know, the line of your question. The, the, the because, because uh, I mean, these are political leaders, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And we have said uh, they are political leaders and they are Malawians at the same time. Yeah. Do they have anything to say about all this? Yes. If they do, are they, they're welcome to share those ideas with them. But you see, some of the problems that have been happening, mm. some of the leaders that you're talking about, mm. they've, they've been addressing the press on their own, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Just to address the, the, the press. And they talk about all the negativities around, uh, around uh, you know, coronavirus. And we are saying, are there no proper channels of channeling your ideas, you know, to government instead of addressing, you know, the press? Because, and, and some of the sessions that have been made, they made in those particular, you know, uh, particular uh, press briefings mm -hmm. have been lies. Like what? Literally lies. lies like what? I mean, there was an issue that was said about uh, members of the committee drawing allowances every day. It is a lie. It is a complete lie. None of the members has ever drawn allowances from the community since we started. And this is true. So to have a leader to stand in front of a camera and to tell the nation that members of the committee are drawing allowances every day, it is a lie. Where are this you, is a social where, media... You, where, where are you uh, getting the money to move around the country if you're not getting allowances? I mean, we are privileged as ministers mm -hmm. to have, uh, in, in our own right, uh, we are privileged to have fuel in our cars. So we are, we are basically using our own entire. So you want to tell this television. We are using our own entire. You want to tell to, this television to you have drawn not even a single tambala from COVID funds. No, not, not, not up to now. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but not up to now. Not up to now. We've been meeting for more than a month and none of us has drawn in our lives. There, there, there has been a, some sort of resentment from the members of the general public in the preventative measures that you have come up as a government. Even the issues of lockdown, which has been challenged in court, it, it faced a lot of resentment from the members of the general public because you seem not to consult. And that's why I was saying, are you consulting the relevant authorities? Uh, Brian, I would want to take this uh, from me. Yeah. I'm a member of the committee. I have been attending literally each and every meeting that has been happening. I know exactly how we've been working. 
and who we have been in touch with. Mm. We have met the members of the clergy. Actually, as early as last week, we had a, you know, an indoor in Lelongo where we met uh, you know, leadership of uh, a, a Evangelical Association of Malawi, Episcopal Conference of Malawi, Muslim Association of Malawi, uh, the, the Pentecostal bodies. Mm -hmm. We met them. Anglican, Seventh Day, all of them, we met them, consulting them on how we can you know, move forward as a country on this pandemic. That is part of consultation. Prior to that, we also held together with UNICEF, we held a, a, you know, a meeting uh, where we invited traditional leaders, paramount chiefs, senior chiefs, and there were members of special interest groups there. And there were also some religious leaders that turned up for that meeting. We've been meeting them. We, as a committee, also met the Society of Medical Doctors. We met them for about four hours, you know, in Lima, listening to them. They had very, very good, you know, suggestions to make to the committee. And some of the suggestions that they, were, they made mm -hmm. are the ones that we're incorporating now in our day-to-door -day work. And we've been meeting literally, we, we met the business people, representatives of the business people. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, when you say that we are monopolizing and we are not concerting, I don't understand what you're talking about because we have been meeting different stakeholders. And for your information, mm -hmm. these people that turn up in these meetings, they represent various groups, they represent Malawians. How, how, right. how essential, Honorable Minister, how essential was it for your government to do a complete lockdown on Malawi? Brian, it was very essential. It was very essential? It was very essential. Uh, you will excuse me that I will not discuss a lot about the lockdown mm -hmm. because there is an injunction. But uh, I can say that uh, it was a well thought decision and uh, we consulted widely. We also drew lessons from what is happening around us. So we felt that there was need for us to lock down the country. You will recall that uh, the first cases that were, record, that were recorded were imported cases. But um, a few weeks ago, we started recording local transmission. Now, these are people that had no, that had no history of travel in the recent past. They had no history of being in contact with any person who was known to have contacted you know, the virus. So that is what raised our eyebrows to say, now the disease is spreading. And so for us to curtail this, there is need for us to lock down the country. So it was on an informed position. We just didn't wake up one morning and decided that, oh, let us lock up the country. We were informed by the statistics that were there, given by the professionals, to say if we go by this trend, we, we, without, we, cushion, we, we without, without cushioning the poor. You wanted the poor to, to be inside their homes without anything, no, without I, nothing to no, eat. No, Brian, arrangements were made. Arrangements were made, and we had to announce those arrangements. Uh, the cushioning measures, we had them in place, and we had to announce them, and then there the, was the, the issue The issue went to court on a Friday. We're not talking about the court inside the court. But the issue went to court on Friday. The lockdown was scheduled to start on Saturday. When were you expected to announce the, the cushioning measures? The same day on Friday, we were about to be announcing all that. We had all that in place, and we were just about to announce that. There is a, a perception out here that you are afraid of the fresh pause coming in July. Is this a fair assessment of your government? It is not a fair assessment. Those claims are very unfounded. We have never been afraid of an election. As a matter of fact, I may not be speaking for DPP because I don't speak for the party. I speak for government. Yeah, and I'm talking but to I'm you a as member. a government. I'm a member of the, of the DPP. Yes. So I can speak on that position. Yeah. As a DPP, we have never been afraid of election. We have never failed an election. And therefore, there was no reason for us to be afraid of the election coming. Because people are saying that you are using Corona to run away 
from fresh ports. It is all politics. It is all politics. You see, we, we are living in a very polarized uh, you know, political environment. You see, the, 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 that's the challenge that coronavirus has found us in the middle of political, uh, you know, political trajectory. We, we are in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very precarious situation insofar as politics is concerned. Your, so government, you, you, your, your, government, your government has shown that it doesn't want fresh polls. Uh, can you give me an indication as to you how... You went to court to say even the case, the, 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 president, uh, the, the case on elections should not, be, should not be heard at all. Is it not the right of any person to go to court to seek redress? Is it not our right? Is, not the, is it not the right of the president? Is it not the right of anybody to go to court to, to seek redress? Even when the judgment came on February 3, you went to Supreme Court to say, we are not satisfied. If you are not afraid of fresh elections... Br Brian, if, no, okay, let, me, let uh, me just finish. Let me just finish. If you are not afraid of fresh polls, why are you fighting? <laughs> Brian. When everybody was happy with the judgment. Uh, Brian, no, no, no. I, I think... Uh, those assertions and overstatements to say everybody was happy with this with the we saw uh, the, the majority judgment. the no, majority no, no. being happy with no, it. no 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 in fact you should say uh -huh. we saw the majority of dpp uh, you know members being unhappy with the with the judgment but anyway that's not the point yeah yeah the what point, is the point the, the point is mm -hmm. any person in this country any malawian in this country has a right to seek redress in the magistrate court in the high court even at the supreme court so it should not surprise you when the president and the, and the Malawi Electoral Commission went to the Supreme Court to plead their case. It is their right. You cannot fault them. And that's not in an indication that the DPP or government is afraid of an election or, or this uh, coming election. No. So your appeal doesn't show that you are not afraid. Because not if you if you're if you're the right, if as a government, if as a government, you're not afraid of fresh elections. Yes. Why can't you say okay, we'll meet, we'll meet? No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, we're going. Uh, whether, you are going? Whatever. I mean, the elections, uh, the Malawi elections, uh, Malawi Electoral Commission says that uh, we'll have the elections on the 2nd of uh, July. Is it not? Mm -hmm. We are participating. We are participating. So you're not afraid at all? Why not? Why, why should we be afraid? Because the people are saying uh, that you, you why want... Why should we be afraid? People are saying when that... When we have not filled an election pe pe before. People are saying that you wanted the lockdown seriously so that you buy more time as you prepare for, for the election. No, that is a lie. You wanted to use that to make sure that we cancel the fresh uh, polls coming ahead. No, th this, this is a complete lie, Brian. And it's very, very uh, sad that people would be making serious allegations uh, around uh, coronavirus. You see, Brian, I'm sure you follow what is happening around us. You follow international news. You've seen multitudes of people dying from this virus. You've seen people being buried in one grave, mass grave. This is a serious matter. This matter cannot be politicized. This matter cannot be taken lightly. It is a very, very serious where, matter. Where, where? Brian, we cannot take this and attach it yeah. to the election. I understand. We cannot take it I and understand. attach it to politics. I this understand. This is a very, very serious But it has matter. started with you. Why are you putting politicians in front of the fight? Why not doctors? Because elsewhere, relevant people are in the forefront of the fight no. where you put a special committee of politicians to manage the the, 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 the fight instead of experts doctors that's where people are saying you're polit politicizing the whole matter well, where are the doctors in all this well brian i think you need to Honorable know, Bodoman. sometimes you need to take your time to familiarize yourself with what is going on in the country mm -hmm. and how your government runs mm -hmm. i'm not sure how far you've gone to, to know how your government runs because mm -hmm. you are saying that the president has fronted politicians yeah. and the, the committee is full of politicians. Mm -hmm. What is it that they can tell us? You're wrong. You're wrong. This is a special cabinet committee. And for your information, mm -hmm. we have several other cabinet committees. We have a committee on economy. We have a committee on uh, you know, uh, infrastructure. We have a committee on legal affairs. There are several committees. And when we meet in that particular committee, if we are meeting as a cabinet committee, it's not just us politicians or ministers meeting. There are multitudes, or should I change, there, there, there are a number mm -hmm. of professionals mm -hmm. that are behind us. We are not seeing the them. PS, we are not so seeing There are so many of them. Yeah, we are not seeing They are there. You are not seeing They are there. For your information, mm -hmm. the, the, um, uh, the 
announcement yesterday mm -hmm. about this uh, announcement on uh, this was on Wednesday mm -hmm. uh, or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It was given by the, uh, the, the, the Secretary for Health. Mm -hmm. Secretary for Health is leading as a lead ministry together with other you know, PSs from information, agriculture, foreign affairs, and all those. They, they also sit in their, in their you know, subcommittee as a technical committee, and they're the ones that advise us on how we can do uh, what we should be doing. So let me, let me correct you to say, when you see us as ministers, mm -hmm. we are not just there sitting alone. Mm -hmm. We are there with technical people because that's what entails a cabinet committee. A cabinet committee cannot meet mm -hmm. without professionals because they are the ones that are supposed to inform us technically on how things uh, should be going. So that particular committee is comprised of various technical people, including security people. We have the command, uh, army commander there, we have the IG there, all of us sit in that committee. Honorable Minister, so, so, so we, we have to take a, a short break. We'll be back with you in a moment. In case you're just joining us, you're watching Times exclusive here on TTV. My name is Brian Band. I'm joined by the Honorable Minister of Information, who is also the official spokesperson for the Malawi government. We'll take a short break. We'll be back in a moment. I love brilliant green on my walls. I love signal red, sweet lime, electric blue. I just love golden yellow. You get all that and more at Rainbow Paints. Imagine a water-based paint that is water-resistant. Imagine a paint that is absolutely washable to remove dirt. And it guarantees you 10,000 cleaning scrubs over its lifespan without losing its luster. There can only be one paint that does just that. And that paint is Acrylic Sheen. Get yours today at all leading hardware stores. Rainbow Paints. Peace of mind. Part of the deal. You are watching Times Exclusive on TTV. I'm joined by the Honorable Minister of Information, who is also the government spokesperson. Welcome back to the other half of the program, Honorable Minister. Thank you. There is also a concern out here that uh, the preventative measures that you are giving, they, um, they may not be legally binding. You are taking away rights, critical rights of the citizenry. Is it not possible to legalize all these preventative measures that you are making as a committee? Uh, Brian, I have heard those sentiments mm. and um, I may not dwell much on that. All I can say is that uh, uh, the Minister of uh, Health mm. acted within the confines of the law to announce those measures. He's empowered by the law uh, to, first of all, uh, the declaration that he made that now uh, coronavirus is a formidable disease. So that he was empowered by law. Mm. And he further went ahead to announce the measures that he had put in place. And that also, he's empowered by the law. So he acted within the ambits of the law, and uh, uh, people can have their own opinions. Uh, but you see, the, the, the minister was not wrong to, to, to make those, uh, those declarations. What about the spending? You are spending huge amounts of money without the approval of parliament. Is that how things should be, Honorable Minister? We are in a, in a, in a state of disaster. Mm -hmm. We are in a crisis. And obviously, we had to react in such a manner. What I know from the information that I have is that uh, the Minister of Finance is allowed to spend money outside the budget as long as he goes back to Parliament before the 30th of June of every year to report to Parliament on those expenditures. So in our view, Brian, there's nothing illegal that the Minister of Finance is doing. Without, in, without in, Parliament, the city. Parliament obviously we will regularize. Parliament will Which regularize. one should start? Which one should, should the, start? I've just told you yeah. that I've been informed yeah. that uh, the Minister of, of Finance is allowed to spend money outside of the budget and then when he goes back to Parliament, he can, uh, you can ask Parliament 
to regularize. But he needs to do that before the 30th of June. How, how much money have you raised for the fight against Corona? I do not have details now. Billions? I do not have details. Billions? Now. No, I do not have details, Brian. Uh, what I know is that we have uh, cooperating partners that have been supporting mm. us. And we have uh, the Treasury uh, also released some money. So how much uh, have you... Uh, no, I do not have details. Taken but this, from those details, But I want to assure you, yeah. those details will be made... But you are in the Cabinet because, Committee. Yes. but You are in the Cabinet Committee. Y yes, yes. Yeah. I, I am in the Cabinet so Committee. So give me a simple picture. Is it 25 billion? 30 billion? No, I do not have details now. You don't have details? I do not have details. But I want to assure there, you... There is, there uh, is, let, wait a minute. Yeah. I want to assure you yes. that all these details be brought to light. There, there is, this, this is a government that believes in transparency and accountability. There is also a concern that uh, you are channeling money to areas that may not necessarily be relevant. The health sector, we have seen in the past few weeks, where health personnel have gone on strike to say they are not receiving the, 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 the allowance that they are receiving is very minimal. What are you doing to address this problem? Uh, first of all, I think we need to address the first issue. What is the first issue? Alleged that uh, we or government is channeling money to uh, agencies that are not. Uh, I, I hear. Uh, I, I hear that the BIM, <clears throat> an organisation run by the first lady, Madame Gertrude Mutariga, received one billion from the Corona funds. It, it's a complete lie. It's a complete lie. It is a complete lie. So what is the truth? Those are what is the truth? Those are you know uh, uh, social media lies. It's fake news. BIM has not drawn any money from COVID funds, insofar as we know. It is a lie. Now, if you talk about the issues to do with the strikes mm -hmm. that have been staged by health workers in various hospitals in the country, they are being addressed or are being addressed, mm -hmm. and uh, most of them, as we speak now, mm -hmm. have been addressed. The issue of allowances has been addressed, and the issue of PPEs has been addressed and continues to be addressed because some of these things are long-term uh, procedures that we have to be followed. But those matters have been addressed. There has been a lot of engagement between the body of the, you know, of the health workers and government, and we have been able to, to address those issues. So BIM did not collect any funds from, from, from government in as far as this fight is concerned? BIM insofar as we know, mm -hmm. has not drawn any money from COVID funds to, to do whatever they are doing. That is a complete lie. It is very important for you to be honest with me, Honorable Minister, because we are dealing with lies here and the taxes, people's money. So when you are answering, don't just answer as a politician. Answer knowing that Malawians are watching you tonight. Of course, Brian, you cannot take a politician out of me. And uh, obviously, I don't understand when you say I should not answer as a politician mm -hmm. because I'm defined by politics. I'm a politician. But what I'm telling you is what is on the ground. And that's what I know. That BIM has not drawn any money from COVID funds. That is the truth. Let, 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 let's move on. How long are we going to be in these preventative measures that you have given. I hear churches, are churches supposed to convene or not? Well, Brian, there has been uh, <clears throat> a lot of engagements between government and the members of the clergy. Uh, we did not necessarily ask the churches not to convene or the religious, you know, uh, religious bodies not to uh, convene. But uh, you see, the wisdom of our members of the clergy mm -hmm. has it. You did, you most did, you did not what? We did not necessarily told them what to do. No, we the Honourable the the Minister of Local Government said in a press conference in Longwe to say that churches should down, shut down. No, no, that was clarified. Uh, that, that was clarified. What was clarified? Later on, it was clarified. To what? You clarified see, to what? Uh, you see, what, what, what we had initially said, and that, this is what the president actually said, mm -hmm. that uh, people should not gather, not, not just churches, not just mosques, uh, people should not gather more than 100 uh, in numbers. All right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we had been following. 
So in our several engagements with members of the clergy, we only, we, all we did was just to give them the picture of the spread of the virus and what we would be seeing in the future, or what we are seeing in the future, uh, if we are in the current status. So we give them that picture. And uh, most of them, as I speak now, mm -hmm. have suspended their services. We did not necessarily tell them that, you see, go ahead and suspend your services. But some of them, uh, I, should, I should say most of them, have actually suspended their services, which is very commendable. But it was not the position that we took to say, okay, <clears throat> from now on, suspend their, your services. But the wisdom of these members of the clergy, which we actually applaud and we are humbled that they responded in that manner, has informed uh, that uh, they have suspended their services simply because they want to minimize uh, you know uh, people gathering in groups now let, let, let's talk about the the personal protective equipment the pp with so much money coming to fight against corona why are we not protecting our frontliners these are the real soldiers of this <clears throat> pandemic Brian, I must say that uh, uh, in the committee, we have um, a number of ministries, as I said. So they were structured in clusters. So there's the health cluster, cluster communication cluster, there's uh, all other clusters in there. The health cluster, being a lead cluster, mm -hmm. has the biggest you know, uh, budget. The, 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 health the health cluster. Okay. Which is because I hear I hear I, I, health, I hear right? to the contrary that it's probably the Malawi Defence Force, the Malawi Police Service no, no, no. that have received the <clears throat> bigger chunks of money. No, 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 no. It's actually the Minister of Health because it's a lead ministry in all this. Not so, the MDF and, and police? No, they have they they, they are part of the clusters. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's the big chunk of money is going to uh, the Minister of Health. And in the Minister of Health, mm -hmm. the priorities are given to the PPEs simply because first and foremost we've got to protect our health workers our frontline soldiers that are there to manage these cases mm. so we we put a lot of money in procuring these ppes and it's not only government there's so, unicef so, that has come in yeah. there's some un agencies that have come in and as you know we have, re we have been receiving uh, uh, you know donations from jack ma foundation uh, from china we received the first consignment. So where is the equipment? And last week we just also received, the, you know, the consignment, and we have also been procuring other, uh, procuring other. Equipment. So where, where, where is the equipment? It is being distributed right now mm. in the in the in the health facilities, and so uh, of course at the time mm. uh, when our when our staff or uh, members of the of the staff in the health sector were demonstrating, some of them were claiming that they had not seen the PPEs, but it was at the time that we were doing distribution in the uh, in the hospitals. so they, they will receive they are receiving now and most of them have actually received there are also reports that your government the malawi government is exaggerating figures of those that are infected in order to make a point of a lockdown others have actually come in the open to say they were forced to confess that they are infected with the virus this are, is are, are these allegations true and how do they reflect on your government this is one of the most misinformed attitudes and it's coming from my point of um, uh, you know hate a point of patriotism uh, hate, hate in what sense hate just to hate why should people hate your government of course i mean politically people people just uh, for their own reason just uh, hate government and just claim and create stories, create lies against government. But we have said that uh, coronavirus is not about government. Mm -hmm. It's not about politics. Mm -hmm. It is about the, it's a national issue. So let us not politicize this. Yeah, we have talked you about. I have I, when, uh, when, uh, when you I when you when you when you when no no. But when you talk about it, uh, uh, corona being a national issue, it is a national when issue. some people feel like they, they they are being left out of the discussion. No 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 one is left out. No one is the left opposition. Out. I've, I've talked, no, which I, I've talked I've about actually, it. I've actually they, they, told they you. They feel that they are being left out no, and that they are not concerned. I have actually told you that yeah. uh, this is not a political issue. 
it's a national issue. Yeah, but you are those politicians, those politicians you are talking about, they are Malawians. Yeah, but you are politicized. So they, they are free to join the bandwagon mm -hmm. in the fight against. We we'll talked about so it. It's not just about. Okay, let's not go back. About let, let's party. not go back. It's not about a politician. Mm -hmm. It's about a national. But issue. so the, but I hearing you, you hearing you are committed to talk sometimes. Can I can I can I can I address this? Issue yeah, but first? I just want to finish you, on that. You one. you 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 go back. <laughs> but I want to to, to address this yeah. issue, Brian. Yeah, it is very uh, insensitive actually to allege that government is exaggerating figures. We have no business to do that. We are reporting as and when the cases are being, you know, uh, are being found. You see, this is actually an insult to professionals. If you say that government is alleged, because these are professionals that some of them are spending day in, day out in the laboratories, making these tests. And you're coming out to say, you are lying, you're exaggerating, it's an insult. And we do not want to give a picture to people that our, our experts, our professional, they are good for nothing. The, the courts have given an injunction on lockdown. Why are government offices on lockdown? Is that a challenge to the judiciary? No, uh, Brian, uh, take out the word uh, or the terminology lockdown on the part of government. Government the offices, government is on lockdown. No, it is not on lockdown. Tell me we, yeah. what, what, what the chief secretary has done yes. as the head of civil service yeah. is to downsize the workforce in the civil service. And it's not only the civil service. You see, most of the banks now, they are, they are operating at 50% down. Some of the staff have been sent home to work from home. So what, what, what government has done is only to downsize the workforce. That some of you, especially those that are not in the essential uh, you know, uh, responsibilities, they can work from home, and that's what is happening. But government is not on lockdown. So how long are you going to do that? 21 days? Well, uh, we'll be assessing the situation. Mm -hmm. We'll be assessing So it's not on lockdown? No, no, no. We, we, I mean, they, there's an injunction, Brian, on lockdown. So we, 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 cannot be in the, we cannot be talking about the lockdown because there's an injunction. Let's talk about uh, you being contradictory in your statements when the lockdown was announced you were on bbc telling the world that there was no lockdown when president Butarika had announced lockdown <laughs> that is a lie brand I which have one is a lie it's a lie that which I, one is that a lie? i told bbc that we had no lockdown you see i the lockdown was announced on monday all right by the minister i gave an interview a live interview with bbc on tuesday do you think in my right thinking I'll be telling the world that there's no lockdown when the lockdown was announced the previous day? You can go back to that clip. I didn't even say anything about lockdown. As a matter of fact, the producer at uh, you know, uh, BBC, BBC yeah. uh, sent me a message to apologize because they, there is a line on there. When I was speaking, they had put the line, a scroll, uh, a scroll. Mm -hmm. That's what you call it. <laughs> a scroll, a scroll right. yeah. That uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, no lockdown, but uh, stringent measures. I did not say that. And the producer actually sent me a message to say we apologize for what happened. So you were so quoted out only, of context. I was quoted out. It, actually, I didn't even say about the lockdown in the interview. Let's talk about uh, government uh, away from Corona. President Mutarika is being criticised. For not being sensitive. The February 3 judgment asked Parliament to assess the competence of the commissioners. Parliament did its part, sent the recommendations to President Mutarika to fire the commissioners. Why is President Mutarika insisting? On fire, or insisting on keeping the commissioners, yet he's able to fire the army commander and the other people. Well, I cannot question the wisdom of the president. I cannot. I am not competent enough to question the wisdom of the president. I hope I've responded to the question. Is that all you can tell me? Yes. Is there any kind of uh, conniving that is going on with the current group of commissioners? 
there, there is nothing and there has never been. So why are you insisting on keeping it? There has never been. As a government, why I are you insisting on keeping it? I cannot question the wisdom of the president. Are you happy with the status quo as a government? No, you see what? We are, I think there are more uh, serious issues we can talk about. Uh, the issue of uh, commissioners, their, st their status mm. is in the hands of the president. And uh, I cannot be here to question the wisdom of the president. Why is he not firing them? Why is, uh, is he keeping them? I cannot. But all I know that their contracts are coming to an end. That's what I hear. Do you think that you are doing a good job as a government in managing the affairs of our people? Yes. Those are serious concerns. Yes, Brian. They are uh, serious concerns. Brian. Uh, this is the only government that has performed amidst several challenges. This government has performed and performed well amidst several challenges. You remember when Professor Arthur Bidam Tariqa was taking over government in 2014, donors or cooperating partners had stopped to support the budget. So Professor Arthur Bidam Tariqa had to run this country from taxes. And he has been doing that until later on, at the very end, when we've, stay, we've started seeing one by one, they have been coming back because of the good policies that the president has. But we, as government... Which, which good policies? There's so many good policies. This is a government that has policies uh, that are speaking to the lives of the people. And that is why you see the when, when you have thousands why, when, you when, you have th when you have thousands of people marching on the street against your government, what does that tell you? Uh, well, what we know is that uh, <laughs> in any country, mm -hmm. not everyone will agree with government. Not everybody, not everybody. It's not possible for everyone to agree uh, with government. So people can exercise their right uh, to, to march in the street because in their own, you know, uh, thinking, they, they do not agree with it in certain things that government is doing. So we are not surprised. We are in a free society. We, we, are, we are a democratic uh, country. And for you to see that, mm -hmm. for you to see that, mm -hmm. you should know that we have one of the most democratic governments uh, in this part of Africa. Just for you to see those people, uh, you know, uh, marching in the streets, mm -hmm. you should know that we have a democratic president, we have a democratic government. A democratic president very, who doesn't listen very, to parliament. How? No, I've, I've given you an example. Doesn't listen to parliament? Yeah, I, I've given an how? example. Parliament said Mutarika should fire the commissioners. And he doesn't agree <laughs> with parliament. No, no. So how he democratic... Not, not yeah, how democratic he is that, Honorable he's, he's a very democratic yeah, president. Yeah, but how democratic he's, is I that? Just gave you, I just gave you an example. Yeah. That this is, this is, a, this is a man mm -hmm. who actually had to allow... You know, people to, to say, no, let them exercise their right yeah, to I'm, demonstrate. But you cannot talk about Mutarika being democratic he is very when democratic. he's failing to, re, uh, to, to respect the democratic processes. Um, and I've given you the, that, that clear no, example. No, 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 he has always respected. He has always respected. So why is he not respecting? He has government? always respected the democratic principles of yeah, this country. So and he continues The democratic to do principle is, to do is the one that I'm talking about. Government, uh, parliament sat down and resolved that these uh, commissioners should be fired. And here we are, instead of moving forward, we are moving on the same place. No, no, we are not moving on the same place. Do you think the we, current... We, you see you, what? You I think, just told do, you, Brian. Do you I, just, I just told Honorable you. Minister, Honorable Minister, do you think the current crop of uh, commissioners are capable of handling another election? No, I mean, I, can, I cannot say that. I cannot say that. Why are you at pains to say <laughs> something? I, I cannot Why say Why are you at pains to no, say I something? No, I cannot say that. Why? I cannot. Why? I can't. So that, that, that I, shows can't. that the respect of uh, democracy is, is, is not there at all. No, no, no. It is the, I mean, the fact that the president is allowing all this, what is happening around, that means it's a democratic the, president. The, the problem that I have with you is you choose examples that best suits your interests. No, 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 no. That's a problem. You see, that's the same thing that I told you, Brad, that mm -hmm. you, you do not have to put your opinion in all this. I'm not, I'm not giving a... No, no. Tell me where I'm putting an opinion. <laughs> When when Parliament sits mm. and make a resolution 
that this, this team is incompetent. And the president holds on to that particular team. Tell me, where is my opinion in that, Honorable Minister? No, no, no. Brian, uh, I just told you earlier yeah, on. Yeah. The issue of commissioners is in the hands of the president. So let's not talk about... I don't know how much... Then I let's, not, let's not talk about I should, I, respecting how, how much I should democratic this. tenants here. Yes, he is. No. I mean, he is. And he has always been doing that. Unfortunately, yes. time is not on our, on our side. There, there are issues of lockdown and there are issues of preventative measures. It seems like people now are lost. Are preventative measures still there, or we should wait for the mm. lockdown issue? We'll finish on that note. That, that is a very, a very good point, Brian. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you have liked that one, not, <laughs> not the other one. <laughs> well, I should say a very good question. You know? uh, yes. Brian, um, there is confusion where people think that the, uh, the injunction is also including the measure that were announced by the Minister of Health. I would like to state categorically clear that the measures that were announced by the, uh, the Minister of Health with regard to prevention of uh, coronavirus are still in force. They are still in force. The, the, the injunction does not say anything to do with uh, the measures. It is about the lockdown. So issues of social distancing are still in force. Issues of uh, sh you know sh uh, washing your hands with soap regularly, they are still there. Issues of uh, you know the measures to do with the transport sector, to do with local authorities, to do with trade and industry, to do with security, and all those measures that we announced, they are still in force. So the, in the, the injunction does not say anything uh, uh, to do with uh, the measures that we announced. So this is the, it's a message that needs to go uh, to Malawians. Honorable Minister, we wish we had more time, but thank you very much for joining us tonight. You're welcome. Thank you, Brian. Well, on that note, we conclude this week's edition of the Times Exclusive. In this edition of the program, I've been talking to the Honorable Minister of Information, who is also the government spokesperson, the Honorable Mark Bodoman, MP. My name is Brian Banda. From all of us here in Blantyre, wishing you the very best of the evening and goodbye.